welcome to BPIU. This is gonna be episode numero dos. And today I have my little notes right here, what we're gonna be talking about. And one of the biggest things is obviously leads. And this is something that I struggled with. I've been in real estate since 2009. The biggest thing struggling is everyone having incoming leads. You know, obviously not only is there more uh, competition, but you also have more attention or more competition for people's attention. So that's video, that's Instagram, that's social media, that's people that are actually paying for their leads on Premier Leads or Street Easy. You also have people that are actually going and doing it themselves, whether it's a for sale by owner on the listing side or they're actually buying without an agent and they don't even care. You know what? One of the biggest things that I was actually uh, really going after this year was why folks are contacting me like mid-search or after they've already looked. That was one of the biggest things that I've noticed. The biggest difference in 2000, probably 16 to this year, is that a lot of buyers are actually starting to look. And a lot of sellers, they want to find out the marketplace before even contacting an agent. So what does that mean? That means that people are, are actually going to the marketplace first, not to the agents, but going to the market, marketplace and say, what is my home worth? Or what can, I buy, what can I buy? They'll start it, and then they'll contact an agent if they want to use one. And that's the thing is before they would contact an agent and then we would go searching. And now you have to bring so much value. You have to always be in front of them, whether it's lead, lead generating. And we'll talk about some lead generating, lead conversion, lead converting, and then obviously referrals. And that's the thing is that if, if you're not, including myself, is, is if we're not working by referral, then we're not even in the game. We're not even in the game because if we're not working by referral, then we're not giving the level of service that we need to be giving. We're not giving the, I had a rant today. We were down in the West Village and we were uh, filming, obviously the, the vlog, number four. So go over to Charles Botenston, my personal channel. And it was number four and, this, and what I really was thinking about was you can't give good service anymore. You can't even give great service. You have to give outstanding service. You ha that's the only kind of service that you can give because if you're not giving out, and it's really an experience. It's not even like great service before, during, and after. You have to give an ex you have to give outstanding and outstanding experience for them to even be considering you for a referral. Why? Because number one is they're already entering the marketplace before contacting you. Number one. Number two is they there's so much competition. There's so many other building experts. So in other words, someone buys into a condo and they're looking to sell it. They also have been getting mailings from the agents that are building experts. So this is all leading up to what I'm about to say, which is the three things that we're gonna be talking about today. Lead generation, lead conversion, and lead retention, okay? So lead generation is essentially getting the lead into your pipeline. Who is looking to buy? Who is looking to sell? There's so many ways. If you're hosting an open house, obviously all those buyers that come to an open house, that is lead generating. You just say, oh, are you looking with an agent? Oh, fantastic, are you happy with that agent? Or if they're going direct, well, let's grab some coffee, let's meet, da da da, and then you go over, that's one way, that just go over a checklist. Oh, okay, great, I have something else in the area, let's meet for coffee, blah, blah, blah. So that's lead generating on the buy side, one way. You can also purchase it. You can use social media, you can do vlogs, you can do videos. There's so many ways to actually get lead generating that those are more reactive ways. Proactive ways are actually going to the marketplace. So going towards the marketplace on a for sale by owner, door knocking, writing notes, calling your clients. It's, it's the proactive way. It's texting or video and saying, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, are you, are, it's been three or four years. I know we were looking to potentially sell or we were looking to buy. Are we, are we still interested? And send that video out. In other words, it's personalized to them. You know, when you have a, a newsletter, a newsletter is really not the, the best way. That's, that's reactive. So you really have two. You have the reactive, which is you're, you're just pumping out, say, content or just like, here it is. You're just like, you know, in the industry, you call it spray and pray. You, you know, you spray it out and you just pray. You're like, oh, please. You know, something like that. Proactive is you target someone and you say, hey, listen, are you looking to sell? Or if you are, if they're actually on the market, that's lead generating. You're, they're actually on the market. You're generating the lead. The biggest thing is lead conversion. Lead, because con you know who's looking to buy or you know who's looking to sell. Once they're in the pipeline, you actually have to convert them to either working with you or working or at least know in the future that they could potentially buy or sell. So lead conversion is really about persistence. It's about being different. It's about offering value. 
It's about doing what 99% of the other agents are not doing, which is offering, hey, listen, this is a market report for my company, or this is what I've seen in the building. This is what I've seen in the area. By the way, actually, because all these new buildings went up in your area, or because Whole Foods went into your area, property values have increased 1% or half a percent. Or since last, last year, it's gone up 5%. Or we've actually seen, if you're representing a landlord, rents went down five, five straight months earlier this year. It went down five straight months for two reasons. Number one is people didn't move. And then when people don't move, in other words, there's not as much transient action. In other words, the rental market really dictates the buyers because if you are re-signing your lease, you're saying, why do I need to buy? Like, what's the reason for buying? If my, if my rent is 3,000 and my mortgage is gonna be 4,000, why am I gonna buy? Yes, I understand, I hear you. There are tons of reasons. Tax, building equity, putting money down, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm saying the person that logically is saying, I'm spending $3,000 a month instead of $4,000, why am I gonna actually buy? So what do they do? They re-sign their lease. When they re-sign their lease, there's not gonna be much movement in the rental market, or I'm sorry, there's not gonna be much movement in the sales market, you know, buying, because they're like, I'm re-signing my lease, I'm locked into a lease for another year, check back with me, which is the last thing, which is lead retention. So lead generating is Who's actually looking, okay? Who's looking to buy, who's looking to sell? Lead conversion is work with me. If they don't wanna work with you, or they're not, not that they don't wanna work with you, if they're actually looking to work potentially in the future, that's lead retention. Lead retention, you have to put them either on a drip campaign, you have to follow up with them. So I'll give you an example. When we get a for sale by owner, we get the list every Saturday. And there's probably, I don't know, like five or six new for sale by owners. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's three, whatever the average is, say six. When we get that new list, we call them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The following Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay? So we are trying to convert them, okay? During that time, they may pick up, they may hang up, they may say whatever. Say they say, I'm actually not ready to sell. We just had someone say, they're not looking to sell, they're going through some personal things. And I said, okay, fantastic. So what did I do? Did I drop the lead? No, I said, okay, we haven't converted them, so we're gonna put them into the lead retention plan. The lead retention plan essentially is saying, follow up with them in two months. If they say we're not ready, we just signed our lease, follow up with them in six months because they're in a lease, blah, blah, blah. That's the thing is, listen, you're going to lose clients because maybe they were actually looking to buy or they bought earlier than they said. But if you don't even have a lead retention plan, then you're screwed. You're, you're, you're not even in business. You're not even following up. And when you follow up, that's proactive. Remember before when I said lead generating, you have reactive, which is marketing and posting on social media and saying things like that. Like, um, if you're looking to buy or sell, you know who to contact. That corny stuff is reactive. You're just reactively putting it out there. But when someone raises their hand and they say, you know what, I'm actually looking to buy or I'm actually looking to sell. Okay, great. Now you proactively put them into the lead conversion. I had a buyer that just emailed me and uh, he contacted me. Actually, we posted something about six months ago Beautiful outdoor space, one bedroom. It was in Soho and great property. Honestly, I love outdoor space. A is I could put my hockey stuff out there and B is entertaining and barbecues and things like that. Obviously check with your fire code and things like that. However, he contacted me. So boom, he raised his hand. He said, hey, listen, I'm looking to buy. So what did I do? I called him, let's grab a phone call. Are you ready to buy? Do you have enough money? Talk to a banker. We started going through the whole rigmarole, all the, all the checklists that you go down. And those checklists are easily found online, especially in New York City, it's totally different. He said, uh, so we came to the conclusion that he didn't have enough money on the items that he, or the homes that he actually wanted to buy. So he's like, I want a property that's a million dollars, but I can't afford a million dollars right now. So I said, okay, great, I'll check back in the fall, which is this week. So what did I do? I put him in my CRM, which is customer management Customer relationship management. If you don't have a CRM, you have to control your clients through some organization, some way to know what, who bought, what was the price, 
when, it, like their birthdays, there's just, we'll go over basic things and I'll actually have my CRM in front of me. I don't have it now, but we have everything. There's so many things. We know their pet's name, their child's name, their spouse's name, where they used to live, where their work is, their companies. We have everything and we want to keep it that way. So when someone calls, we could say, oh, this is actually really close to where you work. They're like, how? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. They don't think it's creepy. They know that you're doing your job. You're professional. You're prepared. You're diligent. Okay. So I forgot what I was just talking. Oh, so I called them this week or actually, no, I'm sorry. I emailed. Actually, no, I called them, left a voicemail and followed up with an email. And I said, which is part of a lead conversion campaign is don't just hit them one way, text them, call them, email them. You have no idea. They could be out of the country and they can't get text or phone calls right now, or they like to text instead of call. And then there's old school people, the people that I like, they like to call instead of text and email. So you got to hit all three mediums. He returns an email and he says, hey, listen, you know, I'm not ready right now, but I'm still on the listing alerts. So listing alerts, listing alerts essentially is any new home that comes on the market he gets. All right. But he said, you know what? I'm not ready right now. I still haven't saved the amount of money, but I'm the only one that's in front of him. Number one. Number two is he appreciates that I'm following up because he knows if I'm following up now, what is he going to be like when I actually work with him? They are asking that all the time. Clients are asking that all the time. How is this person when I actually work with them? How are they gonna be? How are they right now? So that goes back to social media. What do they do? What are they posting? Who are they like? How's their grammar? How's their photos? Are their photos quality? And that's the reactive, but we posted really good photos of this apartment that he raised his hand, so that's lead generating. We then converted him to a phone call, which then we put into lead retention, okay? You, it, really, you can't go to lead, you have to convert the lead, okay? And the only way to convert a lead is know that it's a lead. So you actually have to do the lead generating every single day. That could be your sphere of influence, your friends, your family, other colleagues, people you used to work with, uh, you know, for sale by owners, expires. You know, there's tons of ways to find, or actually not find, but to at least inquire. Okay. A great way to actually inquire is one of the best lines. I forgot who I, I heard it from the, but when you, when you call someone, instead of saying, do you know anyone looking to buy or sell, which is good if they say no or whatever, you know, what I actually say now, so they don't get, you know, stop, you know, calling me, whatever I say, what value can we provide you now? What residential help do you need right now? Oh, okay. Anyone you know that needs any residential assistance? Okay. Fantastic. Well, listen, if you or someone, you know, that's looking to buy in the next year, you know how to contact me. We'll proactively reach out and take over. Something along those lines. It's simple. It's really simple. Like I literally just came up with that back end script. The front end script, which is what value can we provide? I say pretty much every single time. I literally just sent out an email. This I actually said it twice today. This guy that he put his, his home on the market for sale by owner. We contacted him. He renovated the gut renovated the apartment, stuck a tenant in there, and now it's off the market for at least eight months because there's a tenant in there. He doesn't want to sell it with the tenant, even though the tenant actually has a an option to buy, which is brilliant. So I grabbed the, his. I went to the building and you know found you know obviously uh, talked with people and um, called them. So I said, hey, listen, obviously this is all the information. There's a tenant in there right now. However, what value can we provide you right now? The apartment is. $4.7 million, you know, that's a hefty price change or uh, price that's a hefty offering price. So 4.7, what other, was that a primary residence? Okay, great. What other, are you looking for an investment home? What other residential value can we provide you? He didn't need any. And he just said, oh, thank you for the call. Da, da, da. He was very nice about it. Maybe follow up in eight months. Maybe I might be looking to sell. I guarantee. And that's lead retention. This is what most people would do. They would talk to the for sale by owner. They would learn that a tenant was put in place and then that was it. Now, you need to follow up with that owner. You need to have a system to follow up with that person that's not looking to buy or sell right now, okay? That is you converting the lead, not only does it mean working with you, but converting to, okay, what's our game plan going into the future? Are we looking to buy or sell right now? Or are we looking to buy or sell at all? Like the, my favorite question is no now or no never? Okay, so I know I, I've rehashed uh, a bunch of different areas and one of the biggest things that I could say is when you are actually going into the lead generating, lead converting, lead retention, what you need to keep in mind is on the lead 
uh, when you're retaining the lead, you have to actually provide value. You can't just say, are you ready to buy? Are you ready to sell? Are you ready right now? Hey, Mr. Buyer that raised this hand who I went to high school with, are you looking to buy right now? No, I said, here's the market since we last talked. Here are three places that might fit what we talked about when we write it down in your CRM so you know what he's looking for. And he said, hey, listen, you know, I really appreciate it. And he wrote a very detailed email, okay? He, that's offering value, okay? That's offering value, all right? So this is Charles Boatston signing off. I know this was a little bit all over the place, but this is episode two of BPIU. We're gonna be going live in the future. Subscribe. We're actually thinking of starting a, a new YouTube channel and essentially putting all of our videos to that because obviously this is agent-centric kind of videos, you know, helping out um, you guys. And obviously it's, it's also good. So there's obviously reasons that I'm doing this. Number one is when you are offering value to the agent community or the brokerage community, whatever you want to call it, people appreciate that and they want to work with you because they know, okay, they know how he sounds, he's professional and things like that. It's also good for me to retain, no pun intended about what I was talking about, lead retention, is retain the information you know, and live up to what I'm actually talking about right now. And the third thing is, if someone's actually looking to work for the company, at least they know how we work. They could just go into YouTube and be like, oh wow, okay, they'd be lead generating, lead converting, lead retention, okay? Lead generating, you have to do every single day. Then you go into converting that lead, either on that phone call or the next day or whatever the case. Lead retention is usually in the future. That's usually follow up with me next week, next month, next year, whatever the case is, that's, that's in the future. But that retention, just know this, is that this is the funnel, okay, of a lead conversion. All the leads come up here, say it's one lead. Here are all the agents. Time is right here. And then once you get towards that middle area, the bottom part of the middle area, there's only about four or five agents that are reaching out to them. Up here, it's like 80. <laughs> Especially if we're by under, there's like 70 or 80. So once you get all the way down to here, there's only probably about three or four that are actually still contacting you. And I can guarantee you uh, one thing is that guy that rented out his place, got renovated and rented out his place, there's probably only me and someone else if there is someone else because his lead retention is eight months from now. And eight months from now, who's to say that person that actually put, put that lead into the CRM is going to reach out, they forget about it, it gets lost, they don't do anything. For me, I'm going to call and I'm going to email and I'm going to text message, all right? So that's how you go from, you have to have all three revenue streams. I highly recommend, and I'll leave it on this, I highly recommend that you have lead generating from nine to about 10.30, 10.45 in the morning. Then you have lead conversion from 10.45 to about 11.15, because that's only you know a bunch of phone calls. Lead retention, you could do at any time during the day because you're just following up. You know, It's an email, it's a text, it's a phone call. You could do that in the afternoon. You don't need high energy because they know who you are. You've already reached out. They already have an idea of the way that you work and things like that. So I hope that helped a little bit from beginning to closing, at least for them to work with you. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Have an awesome day. We are really gonna be pushing video this year. So if you do, like I said before, have questions, we're definitely gonna answer it. Number one, number two is we're gonna be going live soon. We just need to work out the audio for whatever reason, the audio is not working out. And we're gonna be taking phone calls and we're gonna be going live every single Tuesday at 12 o'clock. We're gonna reserve this room and just pump out content. So any questions, any inquiries, leave in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. Charles Bootenston from BPI. I'll talk to you guys soon.